I, I thought we were past this peak insanity. Right. We're still there. This makes it didn't make any sense a year ago, no. but it absolutely makes no sense right now. Listen, you might pass on COVID-19. Right. He's had COVID twice. He's outside. He's playing tennis by himself. I mean, it, there's, it does not make sense. You know who had a report two weeks ago that said natural immunity is, is better or at least as effective as the vaccines? Two weeks ago, NBC News. All right, I never thought I would see that come, yeah. but that day passed two weeks ago. And now, no, we still need to be cognizant and cautious. I wear mine for you. Um, oh it's ridiculous. God. It is ridiculous. It is ridiculous. And by the way, Indian Wells is like a big party. That's, a, that's an awesome tournament yeah. out in California. It's a shame that he's going to miss I it. Know. Hopefully he doesn't miss the U.S. Open in September in New York. All right. Moving on now. With just over 600 days until the 2024 election. Who's counting? We are. <laughs> uh, we are continuing to follow how things are developing on both sides of the aisle. For more, let's welcome in Polster with McLaughlin and Associates in the Trump 2020 campaign, John McLaughlin and political analyst and Newsmax contributor Mark Halpern. Great to have you both on. Good to see you. Good morning. Good morning. Um, John, I want to talk about this latest poll out of New Hampshire and Emerson College. So at the moment, it shows Donald Trump easily beating Ron DeSantis, who has not officially entered this race. The number's 58 percent to 17 percent. Joe Biden won New Hampshire 52 percent to 45 percent over Trump in 2020. Mm -hmm. What's your reaction to that poll and the timing right now? Well, it's encouraging because it's very encouraging, actually, because I think Donald Trump has had, you know, a good January, good February, uh, because I think back in December after he announced, people were wondering, is he really running? Are they looking looking at other people? He's had a successful trip to uh, New Hampshire and South Carolina since then. Um, he also uh, visited the people in Ohio that were suffering in East Palestine after the uh, toxic uh, accident out there. And Joe Biden still hasn't been there. But Donald Trump was welcomed. Uh, Joe Biden was in Ukraine giving away tax dollars, and the people in Ohio were looking for relief. Donald Trump was there. Uh, also, he had a very successful speech at CPAC, where his message is a clarion call to the middle class that is totally disaffected, uh, that's in the heartland of the country, that feels like these last two years of Joe Biden, whether it's inflation, the, uh, the economy, uh, the open borders, crime, uh, overall, America's gone backwards and they're angry. So Donald Trump is, is what you're seeing in these polls is that Donald Trump is, is consolidating his base, building his base. And our last national poll has Trump beating Biden 48-44 yeah. nationally. Yeah. Mark, do you see these numbers change when and if Ron DeSantis officially becomes a candidate? Well, they could change in a lot of directions, Allison. He's never run before. Donald Trump has run, run in a contested New Hampshire primary and won it. Ron DeSantis has it. DeSantis may turn out to be a fantastic presidential candidate, but until he actually gets on the stage, goes to those early states like Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina, and tries, we don't know. And I think one of the focuses, you know, people talk a lot about how Trump will go after DeSantis if DeSantis gets in the race. That's true. But so will all the other candidates. They, they know taking on Donald Trump is a challenge. We've seen how he can dispose of folks. So DeSantis is going to have to fight a multi-front battle if he gets in on the national stage and in these individual states, and we'll see if he's up to it or not. Mark, you do agree there would be some bump for DeSantis in the initial time period after a probable possible announcement, maybe this spring. He would start to get a little bit of a bump around DeSantis, right? I mean, if he launched well, he would. If he launched poorly, maybe not. You know, he's basically a candidate now. He's traveling right, around the country right. acting like a presidential candidate. I care about the national polls. But I care a heck of a lot more about the individual state polls and getting a bump in Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina. That doesn't uh, doesn't come easy. You have to go to those states to spend time on the ground. He's got a family. He's got a full time job. Let's see if he can figure out how to balance all of the equities here, including those early states, which are, as everybody knows, so important in the process. Yeah. These little things like calling out Novak Djokovic and, and writing a letter to uh President Biden and, and advocating on behalf of Djokovic. These are good things to do. And Ron DeSantis has been so effective at stuff like that. John, the very same poll shows that 45 percent of Democratic primary voters want Joe Biden to run again. Well, 55 percent, again, of Democrats want somebody else. Biden's going to be 82 years old in 2024. What do you make of that? Do you think he's the nominee for the Democrats in two years? Right now, he is. They're, they, you know, they're moving the rules around on the primary so that their first delegate selection is going to be in South Carolina, because that's where Joe Biden scored his big win, uh, you know, when he first ran. So they're trying to they're trying to you know, focus on states where they can win because they know they're vulnerable. Like, as Mark said, these national polls uh, are a reflection of a national sentiment, but 
it goes state by state. That's why the New Hampshire poll that you mentioned, where Donald Trump has a big lead on Ron DeSantis, is important because New Hampshire is the second state in the Republican selection after the uh, Iowa uh, caucus. And uh, Donald Trump will be going out to Iowa very soon. And, you know, right now, you've got a battle on the Republican side where the establishment is lining up behind Ron DeSantis, but the grassroots are with Donald Trump, as you saw on CPAC, where he's leading DeSantis 6220. Uh, in 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 the uh, you know in the Democrat yeah. primary, DeSantis is weak. He's an I'm not DeSantis. Biden is weak as an incumbent Democrat. Yeah, yeah and I yeah. think the big question is is who is going to put their their name in the race next um, after if DeSantis does. Lots of people uh, that we're talking about. John McLaughlin, Mark Halperin, thank you so much. Thank See you guys. Of course, Great. and.